I found out ultimately by a phone call on a Monday evening in spring and uh, I hadn't thought I'd been selected as an astronaut. I'd gone all the way through the selection process, done the final interviews with the Director General of ESA himself um, and was kind of told, sure, we'll let you know in a couple of weeks. A couple of weeks had come and gone. And the next thing I saw on the internet was that the European Space Agency is announcing its new Corps of Astronauts on Wednesday. This was Monday, I hadn't heard anything, so I, I hadn't been chosen. Uh, so I was very surprised on Monday night to get the phone call, literally saying, uh, we'd like you to become an astronaut and can you make it to Paris on Wednesday? It was one of the DG's staff who made the call and um, I was actually out in the garden at the time um, because it was a nice spring evening. And um, my wife came out to, to meet me because she saw me on the phone and, and knew that you know there was the possibility of an important phone call coming and so um, she could tell by my expression and the conversation that it was obviously good news so it's one of those moments in your life when you realize you're making you know a, a huge change for many different reasons in terms of where you're going to live and your future and obviously becoming an astronaut is a massive career change and all the responsibility that goes along with that as well um, and I think all of that that enormity kind of hit, hits you in one moment and there's a whole plethora of different emotions you're delighted and you're excited but also you know you're you've got some apprehension about the future where are we gonna live and uh, Rebecca was pregnant at the time with our first child so what's the what's the impact on the family going to be all of these things run through your head but um, we just took them one thing at a time we had had a serious discussion about this just prior to the medical week during the selection process because that's a big week it's it's quite invasive and um, you don't want to put your body through that unless you're 100% certain about what you're doing and also it costs a lot of money so you don't want to, uh, the space agency to have to pay that unless you're 100% serious that you're going to take the job if you get offered it so we'd had a, had that discussion already and she was very supportive um, and uh, no she's the kind of character who's always up for a challenge and um, exciting futures it's, I mean, it's very daunting as a rookie astronaut. We spent our initial year and a half, really, at the European Astronaut Centre, and that was just the six of my, uh, myself and my five classmates, the six of us working together. And, of course, we were introduced to all the senior experienced European astronauts, so we got to talk to them about their experiences and find out a lot more. But then when you get assigned to a mission, and, uh, you know, you come over to here, Johnson Space Centre, and also to Star City, and, um, you know, you realise you're part of this enormous machine, and there's an awful lot of pressure on you to, to be able to perform and obviously there's a whole machine of the ISS program that is expecting you to do your job very well so that can be quite daunting but once you start the training you realize that everybody is extremely kind extremely supportive and the whole system is there to set you up for success and to make sure you can be as good as you can be As it happened, I was in the UK when that call came through and um, I was doing some Apache flying with the British Army because uh, I, I still serve as a reserve officer and um, I try to get back one or two times a year and to keep some, some sort of currency. So I had just landed from a fantastic couple of hours flying the Apache and um, had a call from my boss in Germany who said, Tim, you've been assigned to a long duration mission to the space station. Um, and I was, I was delighted because uh, there had been a lot of discussion leading up to that phone call. And I knew there was a likelihood of me being assigned to a mission, um, but I thought it was probably going to be for a short duration mission, um, for eight to 10 days in space. Um, so to be told, no, you've got a long duration, you're going for six months, was I was absolutely you know, delighted. I was you know, really thrilled with it. That's the plum mission, is it? There's not something to be said for a few short missions. As someone who loves flying and, you know, mm. Look, would you rather be doing a couple of short missions or is a long one the, the plum mission? I think as a rookie astronaut any mission is a good mission <laughs> and uh, uh, I'm not taking anything away from the short missions because of course before uh, the space station most missions were short missions other than the Russians who were flying on the Mir space station but we had uh, many many shuttle missions before that were short duration and, and several Soyuz missions were also short duration and, and you can learn an awful lot in a short duration your training time is that much shorter so maybe in a space of three years you could fit in you know two short duration missions now we're moving towards these long six month duration missions of living and working in space um, for me I, I think I, I, I was much you know happier with a long duration mission for me this is a real experience to, to actually get to know what it is like to spend that much time in space you're, you're an astronaut and part of being a, it's a really famous job and everyone wants to talk to you and ask you questions and things like that what's it like being an astronaut but having not been in space and having you know you're doing interviews and meeting people and all this sort of stuff but you can't answer these questions yeah. that everyone has 
I, uh, that's a really good question and it, I think I found that harder in the early days um, because especially as I, I was much more comfortable being a test pilot and that was my expertise and I was kind of at the, at the pinnacle of my career as a test pilot very confident about what I was doing there what I was talking about and suddenly I'm being asked to I'm being called an astronaut when I haven't flown in space which seems very strange and I'm being asked to comment on all of these things um, as I've gone through the training process you actually gain so much more experience about what you're training and there, there are so many great things to talk about um, of what's going on here on the ground and what we're doing. I mean, I've spent 12 days living underwater off the coast of Florida uh, on NASA's NEMO mission, um, simulating an asteroid mission. Spent a week living in a cave in Sardinia, simulating a mission with uh, other international astronauts as well. We're training all the time with our international partners. And so the training itself is such an experience that, that there's plenty to talk about. Um, obviously, you know, <laughs> the icing on the cake is the fact that you actually get to fly to space and that's when you'll really be able to relate your experiences to what it's like to go on a mission. But the actual mission itself, is it one of these things that it can't come quick enough, I can't wait, I can't wait, or because you know it's this great moment in your life that may not happen again, it may be a one-off, but you know, it's going to be this amazing moment in your life, do you almost want to push it back a bit and sort of delay the pleasure? Like, how do you feel about that? That's <laughs> Um, I think that that's a great question. I've never been asked that before, but I think the timing is is perfect because um, you obviously need a certain amount of time to feel confident and to feel prepared for your mission. Um, but at the same uh, token, I, I don't want to push it any further to the right because you know you're not only you're excited about the mission, you're waiting for it to happen. But until it happens, you're an unflown astronaut, and and there's always a risk that something might happen to you. You might become medically unfit. Um, I mean. Uh, let's hope not, but something could happen to the space station that renders uh, the mission uh, unattainable. So no, it's one of those things that, that it's just in the right place. I'll be ready for the mission and, uh, and it, you know, that, that's a great time for it. I'm sure you've heard of the astronaut prayer of, you know, God, just please don't let me mess up. It's one of those cases of there are, there are many opportunities where you can do things wrong and that's what the training is for. That's why we train for two and a half years 